Welcome to the Pixelberry Choices Podcast and today we're going to be talking about Chapter 15 of The Cursed Heart. And um, this chapter, I, I really, whenever I read specifically the last five or six chapters of Cursed Heart, I've read each chapter and I have needed time to process actually what happened and then actually talk about it because, you know, I remember... This year we haven't had much books where we actually go on an all-out fight. It was Crimes of Passion before that. Uh, it was Wake the Dead. And it reminded me of Blades a little bit. And even, remember, some stuff happened even that was pretty similar to in Shipwrecked. Like, a little bit. So let's get started. We are going to take on the sun court who have literally ruined the balance between day and night so it's always sun out our night court this whole palace is in runes long claw and montgomery they don't trust us so we'll have to take on the sun court alone and we'll go there so we have the flames so we just go to take on them we see the ruined place we see our room and there we can find our wardrobe and we'll find from our wardrobe an outfit which is like an armor, a magical armor which will really help us in the war. So you can take that with the diamond scene and if you do take that it will give you some boost in the fight later on in this chapter. So let me know if you didn't take the outfit then what happened with you and then you go on through the forest and you see that it's really hard to move on you're sweating and it's like sun is just scorching heat outside because the balance has been ruined it's just day day the sun code the rule of the sun all the time you know the mosses are dry crunchy you know the whole ecosystem will just collapse if it goes on like that and then we see suddenly animals coming and first we see a stag and then owl bears we see some skeleton like creatures all of them and then we see the ravens and then we realize that they are also with us and they're going to the sun court to take revenge on the sun palace for their princess because Kirin was not just a prince or princess of the night palace but also of all the fays all the animals so yeah it is true that we don't have much people in the moon court like the sun palace but we do have the animals and you also see if you have befriended leaf leaf will come and there will be a cute conversation between leaf and the mc like before sir montgomery and longclaw will come they will say like they still trust us because we are going to take on the sun court and they can't let us go alone so now they know that we haven't betrayed um Kirin and Longclaw will hug us so that will be pretty interesting because the mother nature of Longclaw toward the main character it has been really an amazing thing and also um, the kind behavior of Montgomery toward our main character so all in all Leaf will king of birds uh, Leaf will call the, her army all the birds there and it will be just amazing a good moment and we'll also see the fake cats Ready to attack us, Longclaw will come in between our main character and the fake cats. But we'll sense something like we can use them because like I said, Kieran was not just a princess of all phase or just Montgomery Longclaw and our main character or this or that. But she was also the princess of our prince of all the animals so we can use the animal strength we know. So basically what happens is that we can in a diamond scene sway those cats in our favor for the war and we say we can make a deal sort of like you know after the war is over we have won it we have freed we have freed the princess we've taken down the sun court we can go back to our usual rivalry and they can eat us up and then we go to the sun court we march through the forest and the guards outside so they're basically so terrified seeing this big army like what's going on so we can either fight them with the animals or we can just bluff so i personally chose to bluff saying that we have come to visit our new king or queen her majesty or his majesty <clears throat> and they will believe us and if you are wearing the outfit it will intimidate them even more you will go inside and you will wreak havoc 
it would be a complete chaos. You will unleash all the animals on the all of the nobles of uh, the Sun Palace and they'll be running here and there and meanwhile you will take on all the guards and other nobles of the Sun Court. So first in another diamond scene with Longclaw and Montgomery you'll get to go to the armory room of Sun Court and steal some weapons that will come handy dandy in war so <laughs> you go there Montgomery chooses a new sword because his sword has become worn out and it's a lot older Montgomery chooses a, something made of steel and as per the myths and the mythology is that these uh, steel hurts phase and Montgomery is in a fae but she can use it to hurt radiance or a blaze or um, or um, lustre so basically we choose our weapon so we'll have our weapon of choice there, there was a sword of uh, gold golden hilt and there was a um, there's a diamond uh, there's a glive and there was another diamond sort of a magic like a wand like something wand and I personally chose the diamond wand so it's uh, you can use that as a weapon and that has also magical ability <laughs> so then we come back and we see the fight unfolding Longclaw and Montgomery taking on other nobles and guards and there was a fae attacking us and our uh, armor magical armor will protect us and we will use the weapon to fight against them and then we will go up the stairs and to the dungeons where Princess Karen could be kept and Longclaw and Montgomery they will sort of buy us time because they will be keeping the enemy line keeping the soldiers busy by fighting with them and all the animals the birds the owls will see like really cute fighting moment like uh, the, uh, one little baby owl was stuck in someone's hair and this uh, pecking on their head so this way like all the animals are fighting owl bear to skeletons everyone the hyena uh, not hyenas but the um, feral cats all of them <laughs> fake cats all of them are fighting side by side and we also uh, when the fake cat is taking down one of the Sunker novels we try to like uh, like show some camaraderie because we're fighting for the same team but you know they just snarl and we say like okay we'll get back to um, being enemy after this so that was pretty fun you know and then we like little sense of humor in a really dire chapter because it's a serious chapter and then we go in, uh, inside we travel through the stairs and we go to the dungeon and we see the place is super dark and the fight that is going outside it has no sign here and we can search with the light torchlight all the cages and we think to ourselves that this probably explains like why lustre is so unhinged a century here can make anyone unhinged yeah before we go there you also see the human servants and we sort of uh, tell them to hide until the fight is over and if we win then they can be free and they can go back to their family but it's been a long time so they don't have much belief that anyone will recognize them or anyone they knew at the time they were captured they're still alive or not but it would be great for them to be free of this this enchantment by sun court or sun courts sun courts this slavery they'll be pretty glad to be free of that so then we go to the dungeon and we are finding trying to find Kirin and we are unable to find Kirin but you won't believe who we find you will probably because you've read it it's lustre with a pretty snarky smile that and then we try to attack them but lustre just gets some kind of magic and all the vines come and they grab us or grab our hands but if you collected a weapon you will wreak a little havoc and you will hurt lustre she'll try to put up some spell but you will break through it and hurt her, her and you know she will bleed in her forehead i guess but ultimately she will cast another spell and our weapon will drop and uh, the vines will tie us both of her hands and legs and a loose part of the vine 
she lost will use as a leash and would you know she will drag us and we will be dragged through the cobblestone and through the and through a gate through a door to the throne room where we don't want to be so it's literally blazing with sun and we see their radiance glowing with her new aura energy or his gender customizable character so radiance a menacing character she's looking now or he and blaze and then the two uncles of radiance who are behind this thing and who have planned this for centuries now and then we ask them that where is Kieran and we see that Kieran is trapped in a cage swaying above and it is Kieran's beast form and we are really hurt to see this so we have some conversation with with um, Radiance back and forth that this is not the right thing Radiance is doing Radiance uh, sh shows us some pity that Radiance was thinking that we're just a mere mortal and we'll be free to go if we choose to but we came back and we sort of sealed our fate there was menacing tone in Radiance's voice we have a conversation and we try to Radiance also insinuates that phase are there's a creature that has their long lifetime to fulfill their own desires and the worries and woes of the mortal world it doesn't concern the phase so she tries to claim that Kieran's affection toward us is nothing we're just a plaything to Kieran but then we basically express our profound love that it is beyond anything even with the heart out we can feel Kieran a tug so there's definitely something more than just the shared heart piece that was before and even when Kieran's heart wasn't complete Kieran never hurt us so we see all those things and then Lustra uh, Radiance says that oh well let's put it to a test and then again Radiance's normal face is replaced with that creepy smirk you know the classy smirk that choice is classic villains have or the villains that have a good review like Duffy Eleanor like um, if you call it that girl from Queen Bee what was her name I forgot last year it was pretty popular um, anyway so you know the classic smirk and when she smirks I knew that she's smirking meaning something's gonna go off and then the cage is lowered and she opens the cage door the beast form of Kieran comes out and we say Kieran and it notices our voice and snaps its neck toward us and now Kieran's cold eyes it's not portraying anything of the Kieran we knew of or we know of we try to look into Kieran's eyes try to connect with Kieran call their name try to connect talk with them but behind those cold eyes there is no motion and it's just a pure beast and Radiance has done it uh, you know like Radiance has cast his final dice he or she knows what she or he did because if Radiance is basically Radiance's if Radiance is guesses right that Kieran is in his beast form Kieran never loved our main character this beast form will kill our main character and Radiance will keep Kieran as a pet and there will be no oppression against Radiance's Sun Court's everlasting rule. But what will happen in the next chapter? I mean, you can probably guess that this basically a tale of a love between, at least what it seems so far, that the love between a mortal and a fae. And this love, even though it's between a mortal and a fae, it is immortal. And even though the heart was cursed, Kieran couldn't feel love she felt something and she felt even 
affection, love. She couldn't hurt us even with her broken heart. And when it got complete, she loved us truly. So now her heart or his heart, Kiran's heart is crushed again. And she's in a beast form. And what it seems like that she doesn't recognize us. She doesn't recognize anything. She's a pure beast. But is Kiran's... I'm pretty much sure that not is, but there is Kiran's heart somewhere deep within. And, you know, probably you can guess that they will try to attack us and they will have them, uh, you know, by our throat, you know, their claw on our throat or something. And then suddenly they'll look into our eyes and they'll realize, no, this is the love of their life. And probably, I don't know, like something like it could break the curse. Like first time when the heart pieces got together, we embraced them. We got together. Uh, she became complete. But this time, you know, but that heart was cursed again. So she got doubly cursed. Like, and she became the beast forever. But now we don't know how to break the curse. So probably this, like uh, an eternal love that... I don't know like how it's gonna go let me know this is pretty interesting guys that let me know in the comments below your theories like what could happen in the last chapter we're not vip players we know it's gonna have a sequel so uh we know last chapter can't be too wacky you know so what could go down in the last chapter it can't be too wacko like there's that but what could happen so that's my theory you know like something like a connection between two lovers our main character and kieran when the beast form and our main character like the love is eternal right it is beyond any form any body it's eternal spiritual or whatever you call it the connection between two souls that, that that's probably the right phrase i should be using so that would be pretty interesting if that happens so i don't know what, what's gonna happen you know i'm yet to read the last chapter but what a book this is. Reminded me of Blades of Light and Shadow. The Temple of Ilara fight scene there. But let me know your thoughts and opinions and your theories for the finale in the comments below. And I'm eager to hear from you again after a long time. Come the 22nd of September, I'll be f making videos as usual again. But I had some free time feeling bored and choice this is always my comfort zone this is my comfort zone talking about the books and hearing from you so i'll get back to that let me know guys i will see in the comments below till then peace out